Hi everyone, my name is Beth Dara and this is the 10 minute mask tutorial. We'll walk through step by step everything you need to make a mask in literally under 10 minutes. If you do this assembly line style, you can actually get it done, get a lot done even quicker. So let's talk about some masks. This is a, um, a quick and easy way to provide masks that can either go over an N95 to prolong the life of the N95 mask, or it can go on patients or um, workers that work not directly in the front line with COVID-19 patients. So maybe in other departments who have forfeited their uh, masks to give them to the ER or the ICU doctors and nurses. Um, so let's talk a little bit about what supplies we'll need for today. So first of all, you need a woven cotton. A quilting cotton would be perfect. Um, I've got two different types of cotton here. I've already got my patterns cut out. This is the full pattern piece for your outer side which goes right there. You do a uh, mirror image, so you just fold over the fabric when you're cutting, cut around that, and then fold into the inner line and do the same thing, and then you've got your inner mask portion. You'll also need a nose wire, which I like to use this, it's like a gardening landscape wire that I found at Lowe's. I actually found it in my garage when I was trying to be creative for ideas of what to use for a nose wire. And um, I found a whole spool of it. So I cut these in lengths of about six and a half inches or so. And it's gonna go across the top of your mask there, which I'll show you. Um, I bent it in half at the midpoint just to give me kind of a midpoint um, of where to put it as I'm sewing it in. You'll also need a little thin strip of knit fabric about 30 inches wide and a half inch long. Uh, this is baby French Terry from Sly Fox Fabrics, but if you have an old t-shirt uh, laying around and you don't have any knit fabric, that's perfect. Just cut it up one side of the seam and it's, I'm sure, probably more than 30 inches. So you just need to cut little half inch strips and then you have, you just need one per mask. The other thing that you'll want to have handy is either a paper clip or um, a safety pin or if you're a seamstress, uh, a, a bodkin, anything like that because you'll want something to attach to the end of this to feed up through the mask. So let me just show you the mask, the finished mask and what it actually looks like. So here it is. It has the inner pocket so you can fit a filter in there and it goes over your head like this. And that part rests at the base of your skull. And then this part goes up over your nose. That nose wire is in here so you can press it to your face. And then all you have to do is tighten it up and I'm not gonna totally tie it, but you can tighten it pretty tight. And it's got excellent coverage from top to bottom. There are, there are other similar patterns out there like this. Um, however, they don't, when I talk, the whole thing slides off my nose. I don't think there was enough length put in here. So this one, as you can see, I'm talking. It's not really moving. You can shape that nose piece right there. So everything's great with this one. These are machine washable. So just toss them in uh, the washing machine. What I recommend is pulling out this, um, the strap, the, the tie portion, and uh, washing that, you know, you can still throw it in with it, but you just don't want this to get caught on something, especially if you have like an agitator in your washing machine and then have it like tear or, you know, try and work the fabric or the seams apart. So I like to take it out, or you, if you have a delicates or a, you know, a bra bag or whatever, just throw the whole thing in. Don't worry about taking the ties out that'll keep it nice and safe with your other laundry. Laundry. So that's the finished mask. And again, our pattern piece, just once you print it out, you want to, when you print it out, you want to print it at um, actual size or 100%. And when you print it out, I put a little test square here. It's one inch, just measure that and make sure it comes out as one inch to make sure the pattern is at the right scale. A few other things that you may want to have handy are fabric scissors or a rotary cutter some pins and I like to use clips personally so either way and then your sewing machine and some thread I wouldn't worry about you know oh I don't have matching thread or whatever I'm just trying to save lives so whatever you have it's perfect whatever kind of fabric you have that's you know a woven cotton um, the tighter the weave the better but don't stress over you know anything else let's just churn these out as fast as we can to get to those um, those workers out there that need them here we go. We've got our two mask pieces, the mirror images. They're right sides together, so you're looking at the outs or the, the wrong side. Now pin or clip around the long curve. Here we go. 
Same thing on the liner piece. And then we're just gonna sew zigzag stitch, or if you have a serger, a serger is great as well. Okay, we are at my serger. And I've got the differential, if you have a differential feed, turned up just a little bit because we're going around a curve. I'll actually turn it up to 1.5. And that'll kind of gather it just a little bit around the curve. So there's our two pieces sewn together. Now for the outer. And again, if you don't have a serger, just do a zigzag stitch here. Now we are going to do the pleat. If you aren't comfortable doing a pleat, if you haven't done one before, don't sweat it. You can always skip it. Um, it's nice because it kind of boxes the um, nose and mouth area a little bit more. But it's super simple, not precise. You don't need to worry about being precise. All you really want to do is take one of your side pieces on your um, mask, and you just kind of want to create like that S right here. So, and just do like a half inch wide, just sandwich it together right there. And I just kind of finger press it usually, and I just put it under my sewing machine or serger. And now in one step, I have both created the pleat and finished my, my raw edge because uh, the woven fabric would unravel if I didn't. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. We got our backwards ass there. And again, it's just finger pressed right there. So here's our outer. And I'll do our lining, same thing. So we'll just overlap about a half inch to make that little S there to make our pleat. Just somewhere in the middle, doesn't have to be perfect. I, did, I put pleat markings on the pattern, but I mean, anywhere really, you know, towards the middle is just fine. Don't sweat it. And the other side. Now what we need to do is take our outer piece, put it face up with the right side facing up. And we'll take our liner piece with the wrong side facing up and kind of push it out. And we're gonna match that top curve together with the, cent the center seams on both of them. And then we're gonna do the center seam on the other side too. On the bottom. Now you can, if you need to, you can also uh, clip here and you can clip on the other side. I'll show you guys. I usually don't, I usually just skip this because it's not really moving around too much. It's not like it's stretching like knit or anything. So it should be fine. But um, if you're more comfortable having everything kind of secured in place, feel free to do so. Now I'm going to sew these both together and it's gonna finish the, the top seam and then I'll do the same thing on the bottom seam uh, all in one step. That's the top. Now we'll do the bottom. Okay, so we've got all of our exposed edges now finished so they won't unravel on you. Now we have to put in our nose piece, which I'm gonna go grab a nose piece real quick. Okay, so I found that you can't really uh, pin or clip 
this little nose piece uh, for as you sew because it just kind of slides around. Um, but I kind of, I crease it in the middle and I match that up with my, this is still um, inside out. I match that up with my center seam here and I'll show you what I do. First you wanna change to a zigzag stitch and you wanna make it a pretty uh, wide zigzag stitch so it goes over this wire. I, I like to put it at about five millimeters. And I'll bring it a little closer. Okay. So on the wrong side, on the lining side, I like to do this. It really doesn't matter which side though. You can do it on the, on the um, outer as well. So I kind of hold my center here with my finger and I take my other one and up here and I center it right underneath my presser foot. Make sure my fabric is there, okay. Now I'm gonna lock my stitch first and then I will just go across it. If you have a real thick metal, be careful that your needle doesn't come down on the metal, uh, that certainly wouldn't be good. You might break the needle. Um, this is pretty thin stuff and it doesn't bother my, um, my needle at all. But I still try and keep it in the middle. So I'm kind of keeping it centered here. All right, so when you are done with that, you've got your nose piece that's nicely sewed right on uh, the inside. Now we're gonna turn our fabric right side out. So you're just gonna take one of the little pocket holes and just work your fabric through. Okay, so. Now here is right side out. This is the lining portion. And there's our main. All right, let's take this over to the ironing board and we're gonna press along everything. What we wanna do after we've got our mask turned right side out is we're gonna press along the edges uh, just to give it a nice clean edge there. So I already pre-pressed it, but I'm gonna go ahead and press it just to show you guys. We got that. Flip it around and do the same thing on the other side. I've kind of turned in this edge just a tiny bit um, because it's part of the seam allowance, basically. So there you go. Now it's really starting to come together and look like, looking like a mask. This is that nose piece here and here's the bottom. So now all we have to do is turn the main mask piece in on itself so we're not gonna go over the um, liner. We're actually gonna just butt up right against the liner because that, then we're gonna sew across that and create a channel and it leaves this open as a pocket so you can put the filter in there. Okay, so it's about a half inch or so of a channel that I'm ironing down here. So then we're gonna sew right down along this area and then we can put our uh, strap or our tie through there. Same thing on this side. So I'm gonna fold it over about a half inch. Okay, so again, we're gonna sew right down here. All right, we're back at my sewing machine. Now again, we're just gonna sew right down here to create that little channel to feed the ties through. We're gonna make sure that we don't catch the liner in there because we want this to stay open so you can put a filter in there if, you, if you'd like to. For this, I just do a regular straight stitch, nothing special. Lock your stitch. Other side.
All right, so now we've got our channels. Now all we have to do is head back to the table and feed our straps through, and then we're basically done. We are back at the cutting table. So we're gonna take that little piece of knit fabric or the cut, cut up t-shirt or anything like that. And take your safety pin. And you're gonna feed it up. So this is the nose, the top part, and you're gonna feed it up through the bottom. About halfway. And we'll do the other side the same way. All right. So now, and what you'll notice when you pull any of the knit fabric, um, when you pull it taut, it kind of curls up on itself and it doesn't unravel, so there's no need to finish it. Uh, but it basically turns into, you know, little ties for you. So there you are. There's your finished mask. I gotta cut a few little straggler strings off, but that's all there is to it. Super easy, super quick. Anyone can do it from beginner to advanced, and you're helping a lot of people. So please join me in making all the masks you can. We all greatly appreciate it.